What's up, Nightwalkers? In this video today, I'm going over the TNVC Surefire Helmet Mounted Task Light. Now, at the start of all my videos, I like to do a full disclosure, and that's to let you guys know that I work at TNVC. However, this is my personal YouTube channel. It's not affiliated with TNVC in any way other than I work there. And I've been doing this channel since well before I started TNVC. Now, obviously, I'm going to get access to, you know, mostly TNVC, you know, stuff that we sell, obviously. Uh, but because I get access to the stuff, whenever I find something that's pretty useful, I like to do these tabletop videos and just kind of go into detail on these products for you guys. Uh, it's beneficial whether you're a recreational user, professional user, whatever the case is. Uh, so anyways, now when it comes to this TVC Surefire Helmet Mounted Task Light, what this thing is essentially is it's a Surefire V1B, that's a Victor 1 Bravo um, light, and this is a, a KM1D head. However, it is uh, reverse programmed upon request by TNVC to Surefire. And what that reverse programming means to you guys, the best way to explain it is that the standard V1B light, it's gonna default with a high setting, um, and then it's gonna have to go to low with a double tap. So with this reverse programming, it's gonna default to the low setting, and then you double tap it to go to the high setting. Now, it may not seem like a big deal. However, with the helmet mounted task light, almost always, um, you just don't need as much light for most tasks that you're doing, whether that's infrared or it's white light. And to kind of show you how this thing works out, uh, so these light heads, these are vampire light heads. If you're not familiar with them, all that means is that these things have white light and they do infrared. And the way you switch between them is by rotating the bezel. So right here, as you can see from the indicator, that's infrared. Switch it over here to white light. There's your white light, and then you can turn it off so you can avoid accidentally turning this thing on or you know negligent discharges, whatever the case may be. So now I'll demonstrate with the white light. So with the V1B, uh, this particular reverse program light, and what's kind of neat, as you can see here, you got the TVC Raven logo on the light head to you know, indicate it's the, it's the TVC version. So with the initial low on the white light, um, the camera is going to make it look a lot brighter than it is. Obviously, it's like that with all things. Now, this first setting is going to be a five lumen setting. And then the way you go to the high setting is you just do a double tap. And that's going to be a 250 lumen setting. Now, that's this, this first default five lumens, I mean, that's it's not a lot of light, but it's a lot at night. If you just need a little bit of light, whether that's digging through a backpack, you know, if you're a professional user, you're, you're doing SSE type things, you know, going through drawers, whatever the case is, you don't need a ton of light for a lot of these things. However, if you do, just give it the double tap right there and you got your 250 lumens. Um, and then when it comes to the infrared setting in terms of the output levels, and you know, you're not going to see it through here. So you're just going to have to watch this video. Uh, I'm going to show you what it looks like. And so the first setting in infrared, um, that's going to be a five milliwatt setting on, on the low. And then when you double tap it, you go to the high setting for IR, that's going to be 100 milliwatts. Now, those numbers don't sound very impressive, but night vision is deceptive. So, you know, 5 milliwatts, as, as you can see, it's actually pretty damn bright. And you get a pretty decent little hotspot out of it as well with a lot of flood. And that's one nice thing with these LED-based lights is they generate a lot of flood really useful you don't necessarily just want to pinpoint amount of infrared because uh, a lot of times with the tubes what that'll do is it'll kick in the tubes automatic brightness control where everything outside of the light dims down too dark uh, by having a nice flood setting you don't have any any loss of um, uh, performance capability outside that hot spot as well as you know the the amount of flood that this thing gives it takes up the full you know 40 degree view of your night vision tube you know whether you're using a pvs 14 or binoculars you get 40 degrees um, and of course with this light it's you know, i'll go over the different mounting accessories with it you have the ability to position it whichever direction that you want i'm only going to show you two different mounting systems for this light head however there's a bunch of different ways you can mount this thing if you go on the tvc website there's two main listings uh, for this helmet mounted task light one is going to be a complete assembly that's going to have the light head uh, with this Shorefire Pro light body with a, uh, uh, a Theorem Variarc, you know, type of a mount to go onto Opscore Arc Rails. Um, however, on the second listing, it's a light builder page. And on this light builder page, um, you can select a bunch of different uh, ways to mount this thing. You could put, select this SNS Precision Max mount, Echo Arms, uh, Fast Attach Plate, the three volt body, uh, as well as uh, Reptilia mount. Um, you can buy just the light head by itself if you already have some way to mount it as well. So a bunch of different options for you guys on how you want to mount it. Uh, the Pro body actually works 
really damn slick, especially with this uh, with this very arc on here. Uh, now, the reason I'm showing you this part is when you buy these things, you do get an M lock um, ability to mount it, as well as this 1913 you know pickerel attachment right here. Uh, the pickerel is what you're going to use, obviously, for this piece right here uh, for the very arc. Uh, but if you got a helmet that takes M lock, you could just use it this way and attach it on there. Really easy to to switch these things out. You basically just got this little screw right here. Remove this thing from there, pull that out, put the new one in, put the screw back in, and you're in business. And now this is one way as well um, to reverse it. So obviously when this thing's mounted on here, it's gonna be a certain direction on the helmet. So this would be for like a left side. You know, so right here, big end is your light head, little end is gonna be your uh, your tail cap, your clicky cap. And so if you wanna go opposite direction and have this thing on your right rail, um, you just reverse this thing and flip it around. So that way, uh, the big end will be on that side, if that makes sense. Um, I should, when I, once I show it on the helmet, it might make more sense if, that, if that's not kind of doing it for you. Um, and then when it comes to the SNS Precision Max Mount, uh, this thing is really meant for an ops core style helmet. Um, ops core arc rails in particular, that's what this thing was designed to fit. And, uh, and it slides in there, dovetails inside there really nice, um, super tight fit, as well as you got the set screw right here that you just put in. Uh, tighten that down, pops through this side to just kind of keep it locked in place so you don't accidentally pull it off. However, this dovetail is so tight, um, realistically, I mean, it's not gonna slide around very much um, at all, but that's some nice extra reassurance in there. All right, so here's the light with the Surefire Pro body and the uh, Theorem Very Arc. The way this thing goes is you just slide it right into the arc rail, just like that. And then the nice thing with the Very Arc is it moves. So if you wanna do umbrella lighting, you know, if you wanna point it down using white light to use your eyeballs to do something, you can do that. Um, as well as if you wanna take it off the rail, it's pretty easy, it just slides right out just like that. So if you wanna have a handheld light, you know, you have that ability right there, put it back inside the arc rail. It's actually pretty intuitive the way it goes in. Uh, pretty easy to use as, as you can see. Now, what I was talking about earlier about positioning it is, uh, so obviously most people are gonna run the light above the rail um, because if you do it below the rail, it's gonna get in the way if you got your pro, you know, stuff like that. And so if you wanna put this on the other side um, and have it above the rail, you just have to take the screw out of here and flip it around, you know, because if you were to take it out of here just like that and mount it, it's gonna be on the bottom of the rail, if that makes sense. Um, if it doesn't, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So it's gonna be like that. Um, you might wanna do it that way, it's up to you, but if you wanna switch it around, take the screw out, spin it around, and now you have it on top of the, uh, on top of the deal, if that makes sense. All right, and here's the light with the SNS Precision Max Mount. Uh, this is my, you know, preferred way to do it. Um, I run Opscore helmets. Uh, that's my preference, and these things just fit, and they just they just go perfectly. Uh, that's maybe I mean this thing was designed for Opscore arc rails, um, and, and it makes sense as you can see how it's mounted. Uh, one nice thing with it is you can see the size difference um, compared to the uh, to the very arc, and this this can be useful. So if you're running um, your pro. And let's say you're not running amp arms that mount them back here, but maybe you got a Unity Tactical, uh, you know, mark mount or, you know, the traditional 3M Peltor helmet mount that's mounted right there. You can slide this um, all the way to the front. It gives you some extra space right there for your, uh, for your comms mounting capability if you're doing it up there. Uh, this thing rotates just like the very arc. It's a lot tighter. It's a lot tighter with how it how it interfaces in here. Uh, so you can point it down, point it up. It does angle out slightly. And just like with the uh, with, with the other light, with the pro body I was showing you, if you want to switch this to the other side, um, you can kind of see right there. You got this little screw right there. Um, you take that out of there, just spin it around um, on top. You kind of see this little this little dovetail section right there. Um, it'll mount either direction. So that's how you would switch it. To mount it on the other side. Uh, this body's made out of metal, you know, whereas the pro body's made out of metal, uh, but the very arc is made out of plastic. Uh, not necessarily a downside, this thing's pretty rigid. My main thing between the two is I would say if you want the ability to pull this thing out of there easily for handheld use, then I would go with the very arc. Because um, even though this thing dovetails in here, uh, it's really tight. So taking it, you know, off and on, it's just really, really tough to do it. Um, without you know forcing it too hard as well as once you get the set screws set in there this thing's not going to come out uh, whereas there's no set screw assembly for this thing it'll just pull out easily if you want to could be a downside as well just keep that in mind uh, biggest thing between these two i would say is if your helmet's going to be using m lock uh, then there's there's going to be your your best way to mount right there with the pro body because you do get the m lock uh, capability besides the pick rail um, but if you're running an ops core helmet um, I would just go with the SNS Precision Max Mount. It's kind of kind of expensive, but man, this thing's worth it. Once you once you first use it, you'll really appreciate it. 
To wrap up this video, the TVC Surefire Helmet Mounted Task Light. Uh, this thing is a fantastic piece of kit. If you don't currently have a dual spectrum light on your helmet, dual spectrum meaning you got white light and infrared, then I highly recommend to pick this thing up. Uh, if you have an Opscore helmet, um, I also recommend to go with the SNS Precision Max Mount. Uh, it's really the best way to mount this thing on an Opscore helmet. However, you got your other options like I discussed um, if you want to go that direction. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments section. And thanks for watching.